Cannondale has recently launched their latest iteration of the Super 6 Evo, their flagship race bike. It is $15,000 and it is the year 2023. That is an expensive bike. In today's video, we're going to be t talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly with this bike. I'm going to talk to you guys everything that I like on this bike, talk about the, some things they should have changed, and also uh, some things they did pretty well in terms of their lower tier spec stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy. So let's just jump right into it. As you guys see on here on my computer screen, we have here their Super 6 Evo Lab 71. Lab 71 is new for this year. This is pretty much like the bell of the ball, all the whistles you can get on it. I believe it is 40 grams, 40 to 50 grams lighter than their other configurations of this bike. So if you ever see a bike that says Lab 71 on here, this is similar to like Specialized S-Works. Um, and this is going to be like their top tier carbon, their best carbon you get on the bike. Again, it's a small iteration. To give you guys an example, they also have the exact same bike with another top tier group set like SRAM Red that is 13,500. It comes with the exact same handlebars, the exact same wheels. The only difference is this one says Lab 71. And it is also $1,500 more for a savings of about 40, 50 grams. Now, weight is not always just the difference there. It could be a stiffer module of carbon. It could be, who knows? But they're charging $1,000, $500 markup for this. There's no change to the frames, the configurations, like that, just the carbon fiber layout. So, is that expensive to me? I think so. I don't know how that's justified. But again, I have seen my fair share of consumers because I sell these type of bikes. There are that consumer that just wants the best of the best, whatever it is, to be different, and they don't want to have to worry about dealing with anything else later on down the road. Now, $15,000, again, is really expensive, but in today's day and age, we are seeing top-tier bikes like Specialized Trek, Pinarello, Scott. Every single bike brand out there has a bike around fourteen dollars to $15,000. Recently, I did a video on a Scott Addict RC that was $16,000. So $15,000 by Candale. It's a new release bike. It's different from last year's generation. They made changes to it. By all means, they'll probably sell them. And even when I'm looking at this website, uh, seeing when these bikes will be available in dealers, uh, I'm sure they'll sell out pretty quick because I don't know how they still can't get bikes. But let's talk about what they changed on this bike from last year's model. So not only did they change the rear stays, we can see here we have the uh, thicker rear stays, we have the drop seat stays. They also changed the fork steerer as well to make it uh, fit cables better and also change the head tube to be more sleeker. And what I mean by that is right here. You can see here they did their own little thing, which I don't know how this is going to work. It's called a delta steer. The front fork or the whole steer inside that fork is now a triangle shape. One to fit the hoses better into the head tube, so that way they don't have to make such a bulky head tube in there. Um, and two, they said that it's going to help sleek the head, uh, head tube shape for better aerodynamics. Uh, we don't know how long this... We've seen companies do half moon steers. We've seen companies do other kind of steers, uh, even on their previous model bikes which I'll show you in a second, which was like the ugliest configuration I thought for the Candale. Um, but we'll see how this holds up. Obviously, they did their research. There's always a huge uh, safety consideration when we're considering steers with obviously the integration of cables. So we have to see what longevity lasts for here. Uh, I do like to see innovation, but is it necessary to have a triangle steeler, steer for the minimal gain of a smaller head tube? We'll see. But they did change their, their head tube steer on there. Next week... <laughs> I was I was reading this. <laughs> I don't even know I don't even know how I'm gonna put this as a feature. I'm not lying to you. I was reading this earlier, and it says a feature for a fifteen thousand dollar bike is bottle integration. Now, granted, it could be a it could be a big thing in the wind tunnel when you're riding in a straight line. You won't want your bottles to be massive and bulky. But on this bike, they do give you your own water bottles included. They're a very thin shape to match the down tube of the bike to make sure they're more aerodynamic. That is a huge feature on this bike. They also went for the bottom bracket now. They went to a threaded BB, which you seem to see every single company now doing. They kind of just seem to gave up on pressed bottom brackets, except for Giant and Scott. But they're going back to threaded BBs because people are so tired of having to deal with consumers complaining about creaky bottom brackets. Threaded BBs have been around for a long time. You put grease in there, you tighten them down. They usually don't make any noise. Uh, you don't have to worry about how companies having a uh, bad time with holes. So Candle gets rid of the BB30 configuration that they've had for so long, and they went to a threaded BB for a better consumer reliability. Uh, wider tire clearances. Again, this is the new factory norm where everything seems to be going wider. Uh, they can go up to about a 30 millimeter tire, but funny thing was on this bike when they released it, they actually specced this bike with 25 millimeter tires, which I'm thinking they specced it with 25 millimeter tires to keep the weight underneath there. Um, 
but who knows? And then they have to get smart light. But that was some features. Also on this bike, they also have their new iteration of these RSL 50 wheel set. Apparently, this is a 50 millimeter wheel set that is a play on from last year's uh, on their last year's flagship bike. They had a 45 millimeter wheel set. This one is a 50 millimeter wheel set that they said is lighter, faster, better. I think the wheel set I don't have the exact weights, but I think they come around 1,550 grams, which is not crazy by any means. I looked up Roval Rapide wheel set weight, and they're about 1,550 grams for a 50 and 60 millimeter wheel. So this is a 50 50 front, still at 1,500 grams. And they sit here and they claim that these wheels are super aerodynamic. These are the best in the world. And it's coming on a $15,000 bike. <clears throat> they put in DT Swiss 240 internals in there. Why not 180s? Why not ceramic? Why not make your own proprietary hub with ceramic bearings out there? I mean, it's, it's mind blowing to me. This looks like a, it's nothing crazy. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the wheel. I haven't seen in person. I'm not going to say too much. But this just looks like a normal 50 millimeter deep dish wheel. Nothing crazy to it with a DT Twist 240 hub on it. And then even this, they have the spokes internal inside the rim. It could be more aerodynamic, sure. But for the hassle for a mechanic to change this stuff out, for the hassle for a consumer to do this at home to change the spoke out, such a pain in the butt, especially if your bike is tubeless. Then you get into worrying about nipple corrosion with the fluid going onto your nipples and stuff like that. It's, it's like you're going backwards. I don't get it. But they made a, a newer wheel that's supposed to be more aerodynamic, and they put it on their flagship bike. <laughs> This is also a new design. So like I said before, last year iteration of the high mod, Super 6 Evo bike right here, boom. They had this massive chunky stem and head tube right here where the cables literally ran in front of the bearings and had like this open port, which was, I'm, I, I'll just be honest with you. I'm, I might offend some people here. I just didn't like it. I thought it was ugly. thought there was no need for it on a bike of 2022. Um, but they had this, 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 Crazy integration here. The the headset locked on there as well. I didn't like it either. So now they change it. They got this own proprietary bar, which is like a one or a, a new custom made bar for this thing. Even though that none of the guys on Media Day were able to ride this bar, but this is a new bar that came out on this bike specifically for these bikes. Super lightweight, super crazy design. Cables run internally and then run underneath the bar the stem and go into the head tube. So that is right. I will say that. And they also ran the cables underneath the stem, which I love. I hate when companies run. The cables and housing in through the bar stem into the thing. So if you do ever have to change your stem length or bar width, that's a huge pain in the butt. So I do like the fact that you can actually change out stem lengths here if needed, which is nice. Now, now that I kind of got this out of the way, and the good things about the change of that, again, the bike aesthetically, this this color is absolutely beautiful. I'm not gonna see here, and also the frame sets for the Lab 71s are cool. And I think putting the Lab 71 touch on the frame sets are cool because they they show difference from, from everyone else. So people do like to be different. If you do buy this Lab 71 frame set, it's $6,000 6, alone by itself. So I'm just thinking $6,000 or $15,000, you could probably build it up cheaper, but whatever it is. Now, the look of it. It looks very similar to last year's model. Number one, number two, number one, number two. Number one, number two. Do I think enough was done here? It seemed like they were just rushing to make a bike, not rushing to make a bike, but it seems like you just add it onto a bike and, and it just put it out there just to put it out there. Uh, do I think, but again, I, I'm trying I'm trying to be into the side of a, of a bicycle designer's mindset. Do I think we hit the pinnacle of what we can do to a bicycle? I don't know. I think that there needs to be a new material if you want something groundbreaking like that. The one thing we could do is just add a little bit lighter carbon or a little bit crazier carbon and stuff like that. I don't know why these companies aren't using the carbon that like the specialized Athos is made out of because that bike is so super light to make this thing light. I mean, I, I just don't get it, but this looks very normal to every single bike out there. It looks like the Tarmac SL7 did four years ago. You know, the Tarmac SL7, people say that bike is dated. People say, oh, the Candel just came out. It's four watts faster than the Tarmac SL7. That bike was four years ago. And people are comparing, people are like Candel are literally comparing that to saying it's four watts faster than a four year old bike. It's still it's still a benchmark bike, and that design came out, and people were still making copies of that bike to this day. The the thicker down tube for the seat post, the more D shaped seat post as well. The lower uh, the lower seat tubes, the threaded bottom bracket. I mean, this bike comes out four years later after Tarmac SL7, which is almost like a carbon copy of the bike. We don't really see a lot of changes to them. That's why I always say I know you guys always rip on people like this, but the Madone with the little triangle, the ISO flow. Does it do anything? We don't know, but it's something they're trying to do innovating. 
that you can change to the bike. There's only so much you can do to the bike, especially with the UCI rules with one triangle being here and one triangle being here. Now, that being said, for this bike to be $15,000, it's crazy, super expensive. Maybe they have one for $13,500. Um, it, it's going to sell no matter what the Lab 71. I don't see them selling a lot of these bikes because I think the consumer that has $13,500 We'll probably have enough to buy the one that has fifteen thousand dollars. No one's gonna have thirteen thousand five hundred and be like, "No, that's, I don't want to spend that one thousand five hundred. That's stupid. Who does that?" You know, they're probably gonna be like, "Yeah, give me the extra one." So I don't know how many of these models are gonna sell. I don't know how well they're gonna do with this model, uh, but we'll see what happens. But what they did do right, and again, I don't get where these companies are so hot and cold north and south. What they did do right was they actually crushed it out of the park with this bike right here, their Super Six Evo Two. Exact same frame iteration, exact same carbon mold. Nothing changed on the bike in terms of aesthetics and looks. The only thing that changes is their carbon weave. Uh, and this thing is spec'd out with Altegra Di2 12 speed. It has their R45 carbon fiber wheels on it. It has their integrated bar and stem, which I think <coughs> is a carbon fiber bar, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Delta steer. I'm just, I'm just double checking one thing real quick, guys. Sorry, just double checking one sec. Do, do, do. Vision terminate carbon arrow bar. So it comes with a carbon fiber arrow bar, an integrated bar and stem combo, all integrity to carbon fiber wheels for five thousand five hundred dollars. That bike right there, you can't tell me that this bike compared to this bike is ten thousand dollars faster. I mean, you could literally buy three of these bikes and have three of these bikes for a rainy day, a sunny day, and a and a throw it off the damn bridge day. It's it's mind blowing to me the amount of trickle down technology that comes on these bikes and this group set the Altegra to Durace is literally almost one to one. I don't even see a power meter on here for fifteen thousand dollars. I just noticed that now, but crazy again. If you want a different option, let's say you hate Altegra, you got SRAM here coming in second place with a brand new SRAM Force with a beautiful color with a match on the bike six six thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, no power meter again here, but you have a uh, twelve gears in the back, two on the front, complete wireless shifting. Oh, those are 50 wheels in there too? And you get the new 50 wheels. The RS50. So you're getting the RS50 wheels on here with the carbon bar. Like, like, dude. I mean, that these bikes right here, I think, will sell. I think they should market the crap out of these. I think they should have media days for just these bikes. Um, this this bike literally right here would be this bike. If you brought this bike to a bike race five, ten years ago, and you showed up with this thing, this bike would be the all-end high-end bike out there. I don't think you'll notice that ride difference between this and this flagship bike. This, I'm sure, will be a little bit lighter because of the weight, but <sighs> crazy. So I do salute Candel for doing a great job with these kind of bikes, and these colors are really good, and they, the bikes look aesthetically nice. But, man, this will sell regardless, but I don't know if we should applaud this behavior. But, anyways, let's just take a quick look at what comes spec with the bike. Just down below here, because I did do some reading, you have the frame, which is their zero carbon, which is the craziest, stiffest, and lightest that they have out here. BSA 68 millimeter threaded bottom bracket. Then we have their lab the Delta steer on here. All Shimano Durace on here, but no power meter, which is absolutely crazy for a $15,000 bike. They do give you a ceramic seat BSA bottom bracket, which I would assume they should give you as $15,000. You have a Canon Canadel wheel sensor. And that's it. Continental Grand Prix 5,700 by 25 C tires. These aren't even tubeless rated tires, I don't think. These are just 25 C tires. And yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think about this bike. I like the look of it. I really do. Would I pay $15,000 for it? Hell no. I can't even pay $25 for lunch today. But um, I would much rather be happy with this bike right here. And yeah. What, is it enough for you to go ahead and upgrade from your bike now? From your Candale, Super C Evo, High Mod, the, the green one, to this one. From last year's generation to this one, I don't know if it's enough. Because that bike before performed so well and people love that bike. Is it enough to change out? We'll see. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.